Today I'm going to be making a liquid metal alloy called Galinstan out of gallium, indium, and tin metals. I've done this before with low purity stuff uh, and it didn't come out quite that well. Uh, but recently I've acquired some very high purity ingredients from a co-worker who generously donated them to me. Uh, all three of these ingredients, gallium, tin, and indium, are all 99.9999% pure, or 6N as it's called. So the composition of Galinston is 68.5% gallium, 21.5% indium, and 10% tin, uh, which I have laid out here. The tin is these little pellets, uh, indium is the larger slug, and the gallium is what I have over here. Uh, these are all fairly interesting metals to begin with. Uh, you can see that gallium uh, I, is, is a liquid very near room temperature, and that's actually how I got it out of the container was I melted it. So uh, if I held this in my hand for a while, uh, it would melt. That's one of my favorite elements, actually, because of that property. Um, indium is also very interesting because it's very, very soft. You can very easily cut it with a knife. It's, it's sort of like sodium that I've done in previous videos. So all you need to do to make this is uh, just melt all of these elements together. Uh, which is fairly simple because they all have very low melting points. Uh, as I said, gallium melting point is just slightly above room temperature. Uh, indium is a little bit above that. It'll, it'll melt on a fairly hot day in the, if it's in the sun. And uh, tin is a bit higher than that. But when you combine all three of them, they form an alloy whose melting point uh, drops considerably. Uh, and then the melting point is actually negative 2.2 degrees Fahrenheit. So it'll be a liquid at room temperature. So now all I have to do is combine all these together uh, into a crucible and heat them gently. Alright, so I've got a graphite crucible above a gas flame and I'm just heating it until everything melts together. Uh, I've already added the tin and the indium, uh, but I wanted to show you another interesting thing about gallium is that it, it fractures like glass when you, when you break it. So to put it into the uh, crucible here, I had to break it up into pieces uh, and so you can see the shatter lines along this thing. They're very jagged and, and shiny. So that's, that's another sort of interesting property about gallium. So we'll drop all that in there and the, the gallium pretty much melts immediately. Let's see if uh, we can see this. So you can see it's already pretty much a big liquid mass. But as I said, that's mostly the gallium. It'll take a bit longer for the other ingredients to melt as well. Uh, and the way I'm going to find out if they're melted, I have a, uh, another piece of graphite, just a rod that I'll use to sort of stir everything around. And uh, once I don't feel anything uh, hard in there anymore, then it should be ready to go. You can see it sticks to the rod because the rod was cool. So I'll let that heat up to the temperature of the melt. So as I said, this shouldn't take very long at all to do, just because it's such low temperature. And by the way, I'm using a graphite stirring rod because uh, graphite is least likely to introduce impurities into the to the mix. So it's generally a good idea to use graphite crucibles and rods when making metal alloys and stuff like that. Any sort of metallurgy, really. Okay, so that feels like it's done already. It's only been, what, a minute? So we'll pour it out and uh, we'll see what, how it turns out. Let it cool down. Alright, now I'm going to pour this into three separate vials. The one on the left has mineral oil, the one in the middle has water, and the one on the right has nothing, just air and we'll see how they hold up. And apparently I didn't measure that very well. <laughs> Thank you.
All right, so here's my samples all ready to go. Here's the one in the oil. There's the one that's in water. Uh, you can see that all these are still liquid uh, now that they've cooled down to room temperature, and that's the one that's in air. Not a whole lot in there. <laughs> okay, so it's been about a week since I first made these, and let's see how they're holding up. First, the one that was in oil is actually looking quite good. Uh, you can see that it's wetting the sides um, pretty tenaciously. So the level that the uh, that the metal was at is is it's sticking to the edges of the glass. Um, but other than that, it still looks you know very very silvery. It's still quite liquid as you can see. Uh, the next one is water, which doesn't look like it held up as well. Um, it might be a little hard to see on the video, but it looks a bit cloudy. So it looks like it's uh, sort of attacking the surface of the the liquid. But interestingly, it also doesn't look like it's sticking to the edges either. So it appears that water prevents it from wetting surfaces, uh, but it, it looks like it's degrading it as well. And the last one that I have is the one that I had in air, and that actually is looking pretty good as well. Uh, that one, uh, you, if you'll remember, I, I only had about a drop in there before, so I actually, to make it a little bit more even, I took some out of the oil uh, vial and put it into the air vial. So at least you can see some of what's going on. Um, so there you go. Uh, you could also you could take this out and play with it if you wanted to because it's all very it's all made out of non-toxic materials. Uh, and I had a little bit left over in the uh, crucible, so I took it out just to show you that it's it's indeed a liquid metal and it's uh, pretty cool to play with. But the problem with it, as you can see, is that it sticks to things. It's a little messy. So the more you play with it, the more little bits of metal you'll get on you. And it, it tends to leave sort of a gray color on there. And that's just from little tiny droplets of, of the material. Uh, gallium acts the same way. And I imagine indium would too, but if it was a liquid, it'd be a little too hot to handle. So there you have it. Thanks for watching. By the way, just for comparison, here's the metal that I made from the uh, low purity stuff. Uh, and you can see it looks quite a bit worse than the others. Uh, it's a lot, lot darker, sort of a more dull gray color. Uh, it's a lot more, you can see a lot more solid in there. Um, so that's, I imagine that's all the impurities that don't amalgamate together. And, and uh, so they stay solid while the rest of it is a liquid. Uh, and uh, I had it in, in air for a little while before I put it in. It's under oil right now. Uh, but it, it is still liquid, you can see, but it's not quite uh, the, the same quality as the rest of them. So, there you go.